Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about freelancing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do I become a valuable freelance developer? Well, luckily for you that is actually very simple and it's a four step process and I'm not putting it in a book and asking you for money to learn those four steps. I'm just going to tell you. Number one, build an impressive CV. Number two, be a full stack developer with op skills. Number three, have strong social skills. F number four, build the right solution for your customer every single time. Let me elaborate on these four steps and why I say that these are the things that uh, will make the difference for you as a freelance developer. Uh, at least from the perspective of like valuable, like you being valuable to the customer, being a, success, a successful freelancer is a little bit more than that because one thing that is very important is that when you're a one person company you have to be a little bit of an entrepreneur, like there are things that benefit your customer and then there are things that very useful for you to know about. But first and foremost, build an impressive CV. That's step number one. Why is that? Why is that value building? Well, from your perspective, of course, it's going to help you because it's going to give you, well, it's going to give you customers, but it also is going to help your customers once they decide that you're the freelancer that they want to hire. The reason is very simple, because you are a software developer, and as a software developer, your primary function is to be a technical expert. And if you have an impressive CV, or it seems like you know what you're talking about, if you're charismatic, or like that's the social skills, of course, the likelier it is that your customer will trust your judgment. That is very useful, because if your customer trusts your judgment, you can make the right decisions on their behalf and they will feel more comfortable around letting you do what it is that you do. You risk less micromanagement, you risk less uh, nervous customers or customers who like, are... Like, it's, it's overall better if you are a secure, strong individual who has the ability to listen to your customer. If you can give, the, uh, give them that, and that usually is based on experience and having a good CV, you're going to be able to take on bigger, better projects, and customers are going to recommend you, etc., etc. There are very, there are, there are a lot of benefits to having a strong uh, experience level before you become a freelancer overall. It's the same sort of thing if you're going to be a, a product company developer or whatever. It doesn't... I mean it's always good to have experience and charisma. Number two, be a full stack developer with op skills. The reason why I say that is because as a freelancer you, you don't really know what type of projects you're going to face. Uh, you don't know what your customers needs are and your customers may vary. So, uh, as an example, if you work for a product company, a product company is usually on the forefront of the technical innovation, and I'm not saying that they're like using the latest tools. I'm saying that you have to understand that, that the range of like forefront of something is actually wider than what the average software developer thinks about. A IT company will understand the difference between, say, well, in many cases at the very least, a front-end developer and a back-end developer and an ops person. They will get these sorts of things. They will know what it is that they need in order to execute certain projects and so forth. A small customer, such as, I don't know, a, a pizza shop or a firm that does something that is completely outside of IT, they don't have their own IT department or anything like that, uh, I mean, they have maybe some people who know how to use Microsoft Word. They don't know these things. They know, I mean, if you think that the people you work with in an IT company know like almost nothing of, about what you do, trust me when I say that the smaller companies who don't even do this sort of stuff or have their own IT de department, they know less than nothing. You will be surprised at how low the technical skills of uh, some uh, people are. 
it's really really low and that brings me to a good general rule of thumb for freelancing and that is to be as I said a full stack developer with op skills because depending on the customer they will need you not not necessarily want you to but they will need you to know everything you will have to be their entire IT department alone depending on the customer and that is the most valuable thing that you can be in I would say any company regardless of if you're a freelancer or if you're whatever if you are the go-to person as I like to say the that that is the most valuable position for you to have you're not indispensable like it's not like you can't be replaced but if you are the go-to person they and they know that they can come to you with everything that is that that is the highest position and the most flattering position any software developer can have in a company to be the go-to because that is literally like that's uh, where you are as valuable as you can get and uh, for a freelancer being a full stack developer with op skills means literally that thing you know how all the things work which means that you can help them from everything to just decide to like do the front end or the back end or build the whole thing like whatever it is, it is that they need you know how to start like host the thing you know how to set up like their domains or dns or whatever if you know all of these things you have all the skills necessary to make help any customer practically set up their stuff maybe not a gigantic corporation with a very complicated infrastructure but you will know how to take care of the vast majority of things number three have strong social skills I hope that's a no-brainer uh, being able to talk to people is a like it's always an important thing uh, there I don't I can't imagine anyone who works in any industry who doesn't benefit from having strong social skills and then fourth and last they build the right solution for the customer so you what you have to understand is that this is probably the best thing for you to get right as a software developer it's ju in just in just in general build the right thing for the customer that you are dealing with don't be and this is why I say that like junior developers or people who are too much into hype trains and so forth they never really get this thing and sometimes I mean it does work out it doesn't it's not like at the end of the world if you build something that is overly complicated but you have to understand that when you are as when you are a freelancer it's even more important that everything that you build is ideally a success case and in order for you to determine what the, a good success case looks like you really have to listen to your customer and understand what their needs are I'll give you an example I have a friend who I'm helping out setting up a, a thing like an open source project for his company that where basically it's a cost saver because there are other companies who are selling him a product that is like magnitudes better than the thing that he wants the reason why he wants this thing is because it's free and it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of this bigger solution because the bigger solution is superior in every single way it is to give you an analogy it's like he wants a sleepy little virtual machine and they're selling him Kubernetes with the STO and like here redundancies and all this other stuff and that's the thing I've told a few, told you many times before, guys. You have to understand that you, just because Google does it, that doesn't mean that everybody else should be doing it, because there's always a cost to having a lot of tech. There's always a cost to having very advanced stuff. So he wants a very simple solution because it's cheap, and there's not a subscription and things like that. And so he comes to me to help him set up this thing that is an open source project built by some college college student for something they did in school is the simplest thing in the world and it's working perfectly fine and he's saving them all that money that he could have spent on hiring like a real firm that has this gigantic solution that has all this other stuff that he doesn't want and that's why what I mean with 
figuring out what is the right solution for this customer. So what I want you to take away from this is that for you to become a valuable freelance developer, it's pretty much the same uh, in, in many ways. The same thing as be just being generally a valuable developer. Not exactly, but very similar. Number one, build an impressive CV because the more you know, the more experience you have, the more senior you are, the more trust you're going to build with the customer. And the tr trust is a very, it's one of, if not the most important things that you can build with anybody. Number two, be a full stack developer with off skills because when you are a freelancer, you don't really know what you what you get in your lap when you say yes to a customer. It's really tricky and there's a lot of stuff that comes unforeseen and you're usually alone, which means that if you can handle all the things, you will have more customers and you will be able to keep them happy. Number three, have strong social skills, no brainer be a nice person, be able to talk to people. Number four, build the right solution for the customer. Remember that if somebody hires you to do a job, it is not your place to build them something that they don't want. Just because it's the thing that Google uses or some other company or there's it's the trendy thing. Try to really figure out what is it that they need to get the results that they are looking for. Sometimes that means they need a high-tech solution and sometimes they need something that's just cheap. Have a great day.